appropriate we start a banjo show with tuning. But thank you guys so much for being here. It's very, my very first attempt at uh, Facebook Live. Thanks to the Graskels uh, for hosting this. They obviously have a much greater reach than I would through uh, either of my pages. So thank you to the Graskels. Thanks to Andrea Roberts and Daniel Mullins for access to this page. Um, but we re really tonight, we just want to thank the South Carolina Arts Commission. Those are the guys uh, who are supporting this evening's performance. The Quarren Tunes Music Series um, is just a celebration of traditional arts in South Carolina. And it would not uh, be possible without the South Carolina Arts Commission. And we are thanking them and also encouraging people uh, to make donations. Um, Without the Folk Life Partnership grant, the Arts Commission uh, could not do the event that they have at the State Fair each year. I've been blessed to be a part of that program, and uh, the McKissick Museum at the University of South Carolina is instrumental in helping with these, uh, with these events. So I will give you some more information on how you can donate to that cause. It's one that I believe in and what I'm very thankful for. But first, I think we should start with a banjo tune tonight. Uh, it's only appropriate. Let's see what we should do. Uh, I have a lot of requests and questions that have been submitted ahead of time. And uh, we want to, let's see. Fireball Mail. This was a request from Kevin and Long Island. I know Kevin. He asked for Reuben, J. Clampin, or Fireball Mail. So I'm in G, so maybe not Reuben right now. Let's start with that Great Earl Scruggs team. some uh, watching from Pennsylvania. Haley Berry, I've known her since she was born. We're excited to be watching. Wes Lewis, thank you. Uh, so some, some really great comments. Um, so this is going to be a very banjo-centric workshop or a performance because that's all that I can do and I, I struggle to even get through that. But I love the banjo. I love to geek out on banjo. Um, I'm so impressed with some of these questions that I've gotten from people. So I encourage you to submit those. And uh, like I said, it's my first time. I'm already figuring out, hey, Gibson Davis, I'm already figuring out that um, I'm going to miss a lot of comments live. So I am not overlooking anyone on purpose. I just appreciate you guys being here. Uh, this is a great cause, and I encourage everyone to donate when the performance concludes. Uh, so let's see, here's Donna Roper. I know Miss Donna and I love Miss Donna. She had some requests. She said, I will. Hey, that, that's a song that I taught her how to play. Home Sweet Home, Fisher, Joe and Smokey, uh, Farewell Blues, Cowboys and Indians, Eager and Anxious, lots of requests. Out of those, I think um, Home Sweet Home is the one I know the most out of those. Obviously, 
I'm steeped in the Earl Scruggs tradition of playing banjo. Really anyone who does this is, uh, even if it's in a roundabout way, even if it's a trickle down effect um, with lots of banjo players in between, uh, I think most of us would have to say our main influence is Earl Scruggs. This is an Earl Scruggs tune. For the banjo players, we just tuned our fourth string down to C. Home Sweet Home for Donna Roper. I'm going to have to pay attention because I started looking at the comments and smiling at everyone that was uh, chiming in and uh, very excited to see that, but then I lost my train of thought. I saw Nikolai is tuning in from uh, New Jersey. He is an amazing, I think he's 12 or 13 maybe, 12 or 13, same age as our son, and he is a phenomenal banjo player. So he is tuning in and uh, very excited about that. Let's see. Um, lots of good people watching. Jody Morrison, maybe the only reason she would tune into a banjo show is uh, we are friends, our sons are friends. Thank you, Jody, for watching. Uh, let's see, this is Carrie in Oregon. I met uh, Carrie at the California Bluegrass Association's uh, music camp. She was there. And uh, she's a dog lover, an animal lover, just like me, and we bonded. And uh, she's been taking some lessons. And she says, um, could you play a song request from me is Salt Spring by John Reichman. Great mandolin player, John Reichman. Uh, a lot of people do it. It has a nice chord progression. I definitely, I've heard, heard that song, and I think I've taught that song, but I can't remember it right now. Uh, sorry about that. But thank you, Carrie. Um, Oh, and then she says, uh, I'd love to hear you play Sandy River Bell. That's the first song I heard from you long before we met at Grass Valley. I don't remember that one either. Yeah, I don't remember that one. But thank you for the request and for letting me know that. So thanks, Carrie. Uh, Ellen Peterson, she is a great banjo player, a great uh, band called the Petersons that are based in Branson, Missouri. She says, would love to know what inspired you to play banjo. What are some essential albums you think all banjo players should listen to? Favorite picks, strings, etc. Thank you, Ellen. It's a privilege to know you. Uh, my picks right now, I, I usually play with a blue chip thumb pick, and uh, this is uh, not my 
road set of picks. I kind of have a, a set of picks at home, and then I have a set that stay with my old banjo that go on the road with me. Um, so this is just a medium Dunlop, but usually I use a blue chip thumb pick and old national finger picks. Uh, these are Yates finger picks right here, which are also great. Uh, strings, GHS strings. Um, if you hear the rattle, that's my dog Fisher in the background shaking. Um, the banjo strings I've used, can you see him? He's going to come into the frame in just a second, I think. Uh, our GHS. I use a, a unique set of gauges. I play 10, 11 and a half, 13, JD20, and 10. GHS strings. Uh, Central Banjo Records, for me, it's Foggy Mountain Banjo. Actually, I'm doing the thing on Facebook everyone's doing where you post the records. Uh, but Banjo uh, Records would be Foggy Mountain Banjo, uh, the ones that influenced me the most, Drive. Uh, that's Earl Scruggs, by the way, Five Mountain Banjo. Um, Drive by Bela Fleck and Home of the Red Fox by Bill Emerson. Those are going to be my top three banjo album picks. Let's see. What inspired me to play the banjo? I saw the band Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver when I was a kid. And uh, Scott Vestal was the banjo player. And um, he's an amazing musician. He totally killed me. And... Uh, at that point, I'd never quite heard bluegrass exactly like what they were doing before, and uh, it really gave me the banjo bug. It was a while before I got one, but Scott Vestal, watching him play with the Little Lawson. Okay, so now we got Wes Lewis, some requests from him. Uh, Wes says, bluegrass breakdown, ground speed, blackjack, or sled riding. Air metal special is another. How about ground speed? I mean, talking about Earl Scruggs. We can't overemphasize the importance of him. Zach Autry, I know you. Hug your mama and daddy for me. hard for me to know. So let's see. Let's see. Sorry for the technical difficulties, folks. Let's see what's going on here. So I think we're okay. Let's see. happening here I, I think we uh, hopefully we're still we're still on we're still doing good um, let's see I think someone suggested I believe it was Craig had a Confirming that you can hear and see me, everything looks good. Everything uh, is a go. Thank you for that. 
disappeared on this screen, so I panicked. Well, she we we cut Brown Speed short because of the uh, the technical difficulties there. But this gives me a chance, though. So let me just talk to you guys a little bit about uh, the McKissick Museum and South Carolina Arts Commission. Um, I'm very proud to be affiliated with these people. Um, I can say with experience that they really have a heart for bluegrass music, and I have um, seen concrete ways they are preserving it, and uh, not just bluegrass, all traditional arts. And uh, one of the ways was through a master apprenticeship program that Laura Green, shout out to Laura Green, she's fantastic at the um, Arts Commission. Uh, there was a program where I was able to teach a young lady named Samantha Morgan. Uh, we got to do a, almost a year of banjo lessons. And uh, Samantha grew tremendously during that year and it was a privilege for me. And this was a program made possible through uh, grants from these organizations. And when you give uh, tonight, through Midland Gives, when you give to them, I think there are some comments, some links uh, that, that talk about that. Um, you are enabling the Folk Fabulous Fair uh, at the South Carolina State Fair that I've been a part of as well. I was uh, so lucky I got to have, let's see, it was Sean Lane, Alan Bobby, and Marcus Smith was the band. So um, they were going to have the Grascals play, but we couldn't do it due to a radius clause. We were playing another show. Uh, in the in the area prior to that. So I got that band together and those guys are amazing musicians and it was a lot of fun. And that was funded through um, the organizations that uh, you're gonna give to tonight. So thank you for that. I can vouch for these people. Um, they really have their, their eye on things like banjo playing and uh, you know basket weaving. There's, they support all kinds of things, but maybe we're just lucky to be here in South Carolina, but they really do seem to love bluegrass music and, and love the banjo and, um, and they do a lot to support it. So I'm glad to be here tonight on their behalf. Okay, so let's see here. Thanks Wes for ground speech request. Uh, Bernie and Karen Kahan. He always asks for this tune called Trying Times that I wrote that I don't know. So uh, I, I just never have gotten to play it. And uh, we really, in the Grascals, we don't do any of the original tunes. We just do standards. So I never get to play these tunes much after I record them. But there's one I know that he knows, Freedom Park. So I actually know that song that I wrote. So I'll do this for Bernie and Karen. folks. Uh, Maris Russell, love your originals. Love you guys. Love your son, John, especially. Great budding banjo player. There's Samantha Morgan watching, who it was the um, recipient of that grant that I told you about, that she and I were able to do lessons together. So, hello, Samantha. You are, you could test a, you're a great testament to what some of these programs do and what they support. So, glad for that. All right. So, let's see what else we got here. Steve Knight, Raleigh, North Carolina, says, maybe you could spend some time talking about your musical growth from someone who wanted to play banjo 
is a touring professional musician. Um, the first musicians who inspired you, first song you learned, first bands, first jam sessions, uh, the transition from playing jams to going to gigs and then local gigs to regional to national gigs. Uh, boy, that's a great question. Um, thank you for submitting that. Um, Steve's a great musician as well. Um, so I, obviously most of us don't spot, uh, start by thinking we're going to be a professional musician, right? You just fall in love with the music or the instrument and that's what happened with me. I it was about nine when I saw Scott Vestal with Doyle Lawson. I loved that band and loved what he did with the banjo. He was very much in the in the Terry Balcom uh, school at that point. Uh, and Terry Balcom did a lot to define that type of banjo playing. But um, I missed Terry at that point because I had not, I just wasn't old enough to have seen him play live yet. So Scott was the first guy I, seen, I, I saw. And then, of course, that led back uh, to Terry Balcom and everybody else but uh, that's what definitely inspired me so I just started playing and uh, joined a local band I took lessons from a guy if you're in South Carolina uh, you absolutely know the name Al Osteen I would think if you're a banjo player in South Carolina I took lessons from him also a guy named Alan Brooker who Al had also taught and uh, you know I didn't have my eyes set on doing it professionally at all. I just loved it and couldn't stop. Couldn't put it down. And then that led to joining a local band. And then uh, my senior year in high school, I joined a girl, all-girl band called Petticoat Junction, and they were based in Nashville. Andrea Roberts was in that band. Uh, it was her group. And um, so I started doing that my senior year and went, actually my shirt, right? Went to Belmont University. So, um, uh, that's in Nashville, and that was a big step in the right direction, I think. But really, I got going, I guess, when I got a job playing with Larry Stevenson, um, who's been around at this point. He is a journeyman for the, uh, you know, in bluegrass, and he's been around a long time. And he, thankfully, will always appreciate and owe him. He gave me a job when I was 19 years old. So I uh, started playing a lot at that point as far as out in bands and then one band just leads to the next band. It's like any other job. So didn't set out to do it, but, you know, I'm amazed and incredibly humbled and blessed that I got to. So thank you for that question. Let's see who else. Tom Whitaker. I know you. Say hello to Abby. Uh, I wonder if I can scroll up here and see. Good boy, Fisher. Bunch of Fisher shout outs. Ernie Welch. Yeah, Mike Payne. Uh, Everybody knows I love Fisher. I actually got um, pushed for time. Fisher decided he needed a vet visit about four today. And they were really backed up. So I, I rushed home and barely made it for this. That's one of the reasons I'm a little frazzled. Uh, Jim Fortune, I know you. Uh, thanks for Freedom Park, one of my favorites. Appreciate that. Chris Davis, I see you a lot, or I used to see you a lot. I don't see you at all anymore. He's a fellow Graskell. Uh, that I'm not seeing with no uh, shows these days. Thank you, Wes Lewis. And uh, let's see. Okay. Like it. Thank you, guys. All right. So here's a request. Uh, Hudson, Wisconsin. Tom Schmidt, uh, who I know and love. He says, uh, maybe do a tune you think represents well the artistry of. And then he lists a bunch of great banjo players. Um, Earl Scruggs, we've already done, uh, J.D. Crow, Sonny Osborne, Bill Emerson, Bill Keith, Bale Fleck, and, uh, Kristen. So, thank you, Tom, for that. Um, what about a Bill Emerson tune? Let's see, what would be a good Bill Emerson tune? How about theme time? I've been teaching theme time a lot lately. So let's do a Bill Emerson tune. Hosanna Perry. Hi there. As I said, everybody asks, who are your main banjo people? I already mentioned Scott Vestal being the guy that kind of ignited my desire, but I kind of have a top uh, five, and it's not that these are necessarily even um, my... Uh, I, it's hard to leave people out because I, I get nervous when I list these people because there are so many others. But as far as when I really think back, it, you know, it's Earl Scruggs, 
J.D. Crow, Sonny Osborne, uh, Bill Emerson, and Bale Fleck were kind of the five that I remember playing with the most in my bedroom as a kid. You know, just uh, listening to records, trying to figure it out. But there's so many more. There's Alan Mundy and Tony Trishka and Alan Shelton. And, uh, and I know I'm going to forget someone, so I, I get nervous talking about people like that. Um, Mike Mumford is an amazing melodic player who's out today playing. So there's so many great uh, musicians that come to my mind, and, and I, I get hesitant to name them. But this is definitely a major influence. In fact, Bill Emerson gave me this capo. This, this banjo is a Sonny Osborne Chief banjo. So we have Sonny's banjo. Uh, we have Bill Emerson's capo. So there's two of my guys right there. Uh, but this is a bluegrass standard that he wrote called Theme Time. It's uh, originally, he recorded it with Jimmy Martin, but he also did it on his own record, Home of the Red Fox, banjo record that I mentioned before. Wait. Chief used to be Bill Emerson's. Wow, so you own Bill Emerson's Chief Banjo from Sunny. That's cool. Uh, Nanette Je Jenkins, hello. Uh, Tim from Indiana, love your music. Thank you. Again, a shout out to the Graskles. I miss my bandmates. Um, you know, we, we text occasionally, but we're used to being together quite a lot, and uh, that is... As we all know with the virus, there's no live shows. And, uh, you know, we're not the only ones suffering, though. It's certainly musicians are among the hardest hit, but um, nonprofits like what we're supporting tonight, you know, they've promised grants and, and uh, need funding for really important projects, and, um, and their funding has dried up as well. So it's affect every, affected everyone. But uh, one of the things I miss the most about playing uh, shows is my bandmates, because we have fun when we're out there. I noticed, uh, thank you, Chris. Chris is watching. None of the rest of them are watching. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, Tim Fry. Uh, Tim Fry. Let's see, could you maybe point out a little history of scruff style followed by melodic style and play a couple of examples? I'll bet a lot of listeners don't understand the difference. Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So most of us are probably banjo lovers or we wouldn't be here right now, but that's a, that's a great thing. So we basically have three styles of banjo playing. That's vague, but it'll work. Um, Um, 
It's certainly the style you're going to hear most of in bluegrass music. Uh, and the goal of struck style is just to um, say the melody uh, through a series of almost what I think of as puzzles or patterns where we play these roles with our three fingers. Uh, they're very circular and they're very, um, you know, if you saw it on a staff, it's just kind of all over the place but it creates this tapestry of open strings that somehow convey, hopefully, uh, the melody of a song. And Earl Scrooge was absolutely a genius at uh, figuring all of this out. And I've heard uh, some people say, and it's very true, I'm gonna make the air go off in just a sec here. But I heard someone say, or I've heard a few people say, um, you know, Earl Scruggs may not have been the first person to uh, use three fingers, but he's absolutely uh, the reason any of us are talking about it today. So um, he created this way, you know, of saying a melody like... Maybe that's your main idea notes of a, of a tune, and then he uses these patterns with three fingers. Okay, so you still hear the melody in that. But yeah, I was fascinated by it when I, it, it was just the coolest instru instrument to me and it drew me to the instrument because uh, it, it was just like a leap of faith that if you played these, these roles together it would save a song. And when it starts sounding like the song, it, it's addictive and it, you get hooked and then, you know, it's now the rest of your life you're trying to, to work on it. So he's the foundation guy for, for all of us with the three finger stuff. But then Bill Keith came along and uh, played with Bill Monroe's band. And he was a brilliant musician, aside from being a banjo player, just a brilliant mind. And uh, he, it was cer certainly extremely valuable in Bill Monroe's music because Monroe's music was obviously very mandolin-based and fiddle-based. And if you don't know, mandolin and fiddle are tuned the same way. So obviously it's a bow and a pick, that's a lot different. But the left hand, there are a lot, it's the same fretboard essentially. Um, mandolin players have the luxury of actually having the frets. But, uh, so he came up with a way on banjo to basically play the same linear notes um, you know, so if you had a fiddle or a mandolin line, not much lead guitar at this point in bluegrass, but he could play the exact melody that they played. That was a huge deal. And he still did it through rolls. So there's a lot of sustain, there's a lot of open ringingness. So you have like a tune like Blackberry Blossom. <laughs> sounds different, but it has some things in common with Scruggs. This is the exact melody you may play on a mandolin or a fiddle. Okay, so that might be the exact notes they played, where if we were playing that in a Scruggs way, the melody would not be that exact, probably. It would, it would still say the, the main idea notes, but not the exact notes. So that's Bill Keith's invention, and uh, people have taken that and, uh, and run with it the same way people have taken stroke style. And then the other ma main style is uh, single string, where that really is, uh, this is Sonny Osborne's favorite style of playing. Melodic and single string are his favorite uh, things to do. I imagine, I don't know if Sonny's watching, but I'll get a comment if he is. Uh, no, really, he's... Uh, Sonny is a, quite an innovator, uh, but within the Scruggs uh, realm with the three fingers. But anyway, uh, single string, 
stuff is uh, just like if you had a flat pick. So it's more of, um, you know, you could play Blackberry Blossom. Something like that. Well, that would be a single string way of playing it. So there's a very crude overview of uh, three uh, styles of banjo playing. Uh, mainly I play scrub style. I guess I could do a melodic tune. All my students learn Follow the Leader. This is a Don Reno song, and I should say that Don Reno, uh, Eddie Adcock, there are some others, but Don Reno is really what most people associate, who most people associate uh, with the first guy to play single string. Um, you know, guys like Eddie Adcock were doing it too, but uh, Reno was already out in public doing it uh, when he was still a kid. Uh, and it, it's just like if you emulated a flat pick, if you went. So we use our three fingers to do it. Okay, and usually it's just these two. But So let me do follow the leader because all my students learn it. So. Let's see. of single string. Uh, hey, Darren Aldridge said uh, Jeff French. Hello, folks. Carrie, Carrie says, um, do you have a favorite? I do. I have, I, my favorite is Scruggs. Um, but there are definitely times that each is most appropriate. You know, if you're going to play whiskey before breakfast, <laughs> players, fiddle players love to play. You know, melodic is, is kind of a way, you could certainly do it the other way. You know, you can do any song, any style, but melodic certainly has a valuable place, I believe, in banjo playing, but Scruggs is my favorite. Uh, missing you and the Grasgals at Penny Royal last year. Okay, yeah, thank you, Jim Charles. We love the Penny Royal. That's a great show in Fairview, Ohio that we play every year and it always snows. I don't think I've ever played the Penny Royal. I've done it with a bunch of different bands. It always snows. Let's see here. Roger Jernigan. He has a cool dog named Skeeter Jernigan. Let's see here. He says, uh, several questions and requests. Um, Correct right hand position on faster tempos, especially if you have to plant your fingers. How do you memorize songs? A lot of times, if I have to kick off a song I knew really well, I draw a blank. I've done that tonight a few times. Uh, what about learning new songs and how tempo and speed have a lot to do with it sounding recognizable? I know what you're saying about that. Um, you know, if you slow down... <laughs> songs everyone learns is Cripple Creek. If you slow that down, this is what it sounds like. And if you already know the song, uh, maybe you hear the melody through that, but yeah, I know what you're saying there. That's a tough one because the way to get good at playing banjo, uh, banjo is a is an execution instrument. You have to be extremely 
attentive to detail. It's an instrument of execution and it takes a lot of repetition and uh, to play scrub style especially. It's, it's almost, it's like everybody plays almost the same thing. If you're talking about guys who really know the tradition well, they're going to play more or less, or we are going to play more or less the same thing. How well do you play it? How interestingly do you arrange it? It's a very detail-oriented, very much um, the subtleties of what you do with it uh, that can, you know, maybe set you apart as, uh, as a great Scruggs player. So the way to achieve that, to to sound really clean and sound, you know, Scruggs was a machine gun. It just was the ultimate precision and no one has achieved it since, in my opinion, uh, which is amazing. He not only created it, but then he, you know, no one sounded that good since then doing it. But, um, but the way to do that is to play super slow. You can't attend to all those details. Are my pull-offs clean? You know, it's the space between my notes the same. Is my tone even? Is the volume on my string louder if it's a middle finger playing the string? Uh, you can't think of all those things if you're playing fast. So you got to play slow to get it to sound good. But it's hard to tell what you're doing when it's too slow. So um, maybe one remedy is just to really concentrate on the fundamentals uh, by playing um, just really slowly on super simple things, not even a song. Maybe it's... <laughs> And, that, and that's a good opportunity. There's not a lot going on in that. So you can concentrate on all those details. And then uh, hopefully that just becomes your standard and your, your default style of uh, thinking and your dis default way of sounding. And then that filters into the songs and the solos, because once you start thinking about, oh, this next part, I always mess up on this next part, you know, then you're not going to worry about the quality of your pull off. So that's about the only suggestion I have for that. Jeff Hayes is watching. I know Jeff Hayes. How are you doing, Jeff Hayes? Uh, let's see who else we got. Randall Marks. They, uh, hello from Chinook, Kansas. You do it very well. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Um, I like playing one of my Earl Scrooge standards in a pre-war Gibson right now. That's what Wes Lewis is saying. Any tips on playing Sunny so style of playing? Boy, Eli Patrick, that is a great uh, question. Let me tell you my experience with playing like Sunny. Uh, I cannot do it. I, I have learned Sonny's uh, music as much as anyone and I know it and I've memorized it and I can play along on so much of it note for note and uh, there are a ton of things I love about Sonny's playing but you know they say the grass is always greener the th I love a lot about Sonny's playing I just am enthralled by it but what I love most about it is the sassiness and the attitude behind it which is absolutely an extension of his personality so he's a great example of a player who um, really lets his personality shine through what he does. And he's, he's, a, he's a, a crazy guy, you know, and, and he has a lot of fun all the time. He's very funny musically, and uh, he's fearless. He is not afraid to take risks. I mean, you listen to him play, and hardly ever can you find an example of him playing something the same way twice. Um, but what I also love about him is how steeped in Earl he was. And some people would say, well, I don't really hear that. But if you listen to certain recordings, you will hear that. And uh, he was just, he's like J.D. Crow this way. He's able to internalize all that scrug stuff and then um, kind of run with it and do his own thing with it. And, uh, and he's very much a stylist. But I can play a lot of Sonny Osborne breaks note for note. But if you played them back, what I had done, it just doesn't sound like him. He's just a master. He's got some grease on his playing that uh, that you, you either have it or you don't. So uh, one of my favorite guys, I've spent a lot of time 
uh, doing it, but uh, it's not easy. The, the, the strongest thing he does, I think, the, the biggest influence he had on me directly with my playing was backup. He's an amazing backup player. And it's pretty pretty inspiring if you're standing beside his brother Bobby Osborne their whole career because he's debatably the you know the greatest bluegrass singer ever, and uh, that's who Sonny was supporting when he played backup. So uh, listen to Sonny's backup playing. I love that. Uh, lo be great to see you guys in Clay City again. Absolutely, I would love to do that. Uh, we love Clay City. We were gonna play in Clay City actually, and. Uh, we, we didn't get a chance to because of the virus. So let's do a couple more tunes. Uh, Shannon Gatro is watching. I've been watching you play some guitar things that are amazing. She's a great banjo player too. Let's play another song. Let's see. Um, this is just one I like. I learned from my banjo teacher. This is going to play for people that don't know um, banjo music because it's a song that most people recognize. It's called When You're Smiling. It's just a pretty song. It's not really hard to play. Uh, you can play it with three fingers and it still says the melody pretty easily even for non-manjo ears they hear it. Uh, so let me play that. We'll do this in honor of Al Osteen. <laughs> song on the banjo. Uh, the pretty songs can be played on banjo. Uh, Nanette Jenkins says, Donna Roper, can you play the song? She can. I've heard her do it. Uh, saw some other folks. I saw uh, John Bullard is online watching, uh, which stresses me out. He's an amazing musician, especially in the banjo community. He writes uh, just, uh, he's a great classical banjo player. And if you think that, uh, Banjo can't do anything. Check out some of uh, his uh, his music and you'll be inspired the way I am, I know. And, uh, you know, I just love the banjo. Look, if you're still tuned in, uh, if you're stopping at all, probably you love the banjo too. So that gets us back to uh, what we're here for tonight. And that is the South Carolina Arts Commission and the McKissick Museum. It says, um, you know, as, as we come to a close tonight, uh, this is the McKissick Museum's Quarantunes Music Series, and I challenge you to say that. Let me say that again. McKissick Museum's Quarantunes Music Series. I don't know why. That's hard for me to say. But I'd like to ask you to consider making a gift to McKissick Museum's Midland Gives campaign. Uh, there will be links below um, in the comments section where you can do that. Uh, it says on May 5th, anytime from 6 a.m. to midnight. All proceeds go directly to supporting the traditional artists and musicians who will participate in the Folk Fabulous at the Fair 2020, the museum's 12-day annual folk festival at the South Carolina State Fair. 
And again, remember, I've done that, um, been a part of that program. So I've, I've directly benefited from, from the work that these people do. Uh, also, my work with Samantha, where we were able to do banjo lessons for almost a year together. They do a lot of uh, concrete things to help artists. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful organization, Laura Green, as I said, and Ian at McKissick. Thank you for all that you guys have done. Uh, I want to end with a tune, but I, you know, I mainly just want to uh, encourage you to support it because if you love the banjo, let's be honest, we need organizations like this uh, to, to keep it all going and to spread awareness. And uh, I was involved in another project here in town this year called Discovering the Banjo, where I got to go and for a week I got to work with the third graders at a local elementary school. We talked about the banjo and we learned everything. Uh, it's so fun. Talked about the banjo's African roots and modern banjos and how they've changed over time. And that was partly due to a grant that was uh, given to a wonderful organization called Bluegrass Spartanburg. So a lot of good work these folks do. But let's end with a tune. Um, Leaving Cottondale, Nikolai. I don't know that quite enough. I know this part. Let's see. That's the chime section. Sound like that. I love that tune. That's an Allison Brown tune. Thank you, Nikolai, for asking. Any requests? Uh, anything that you guys want to hear? I don't know. Somebody said, um, somewhere in here, someone said uh, sled riding. Maybe we should do that. That's in honor of Sonny. J.D. Crow also recorded this, so maybe we do that as the last two. Root no rest, Ernie Wells. You're one of about 100 people in the world who would know what that means. Root no rest. Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Oh, that's a good one. Maybe we should do that. Scott, sunny side of the mountain. Oh, I'm getting good ones. Reuben, I like all those. Foggy Mountain Breakdown, just a little bit. Then we'll do a break of Sunny Side in the Mountain, and then we'll sign off. Here we go. Let's do Sunny Side first. <laughs> Quintessential banjo solo. Uh, here's Foggy Mountain Breakdown. 